Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Are we ready then? Okay. Well, I'm sure by now you know what this is. It's time for more Tesla coil experiments. Let's see if today we get any luck. Now, let's have a look at the circuitry that's going to power it today. For those of you interested in the schematic, uh, if the camera will focus on it, of course. There we go. I know it's very blur. Got the power supply here, which is just an ordinary transformer. Bridge rectifier, couple of smoothing capacitors. This circuit really needs more voltage than this thing can supply, which I'm going to work on later. And then of course we've got the messy looking circuitry itself. There's a couple of more smoothing capacitors I added. And the only semiconductor device is this transistor here, which is a IRFP250 MOSFET. The circuit originally called for a IRFP460, and although I did have one of those, the only one I have is one I scavenged from that treadmill, and I found that it was dead. So I've had to go with the IRFP260. This is powered on about 33 volts. I have my multimeter here measuring the current. At the moment I haven't got the primary connected up, which is this six turns of thick wire here. There's the two turns of feedback. And of course, the coil itself. So I'm going to connect up the coil. And we can see how much power it's taking. About 330 milliamps. Not getting any sparks at the moment. However, We now got, well, I now got the tube from a fluorescent, a compact fluorescent light. And this seems to be able to light it pretty damn bright, as I will now show you. That is quite bright. And we are pulling 393 milliamps. So this is way more efficient than what I was getting with the 555 based thing that I did. Way more efficient. It's barely showing up on the camera, but what I've done is just connected a piece of magnet wire to the scope's input. And taped it to the wall there. So when I turn the thing on, it should be able to pick up the waveform that this thing is producing. So just connect up power. Yeah, we definitely have something showing on the scope if I could just get that to stay on. Okay, let's make that. Alright, there we go. There is the waveform. And the light shining nice and bright. See if I can count off and see what frequency this is. I'm going to go from where it crosses the line there. Let's just move that up a little bit. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, about three and a half divisions long. And this is on the five, oh no, on the point two microseconds per division. So. I'm going to crunch those numbers and find out what we have. So according to my calculations, the frequency is... 1,428,571. Or let's just say 1.4 megahertz. Which is about the same frequency that I got when I powered it with a Slayer Exciter. So I think we're about ready to move on and uh, see what else we can do with this. Well, as photonic induction would say, I've popped it. 
I'm borrowing it on this transformer which can give me about 80 volts when I rectify it and it was working still wasn't getting any sparks but it was working until I decided to reverse the primary coil just to see what would happen and I've blown my MOSFET no worries though there's plenty more where that came from so now when I connect the thing the bulb that's in series with the transformers primary turns on telling me that something's wrong and I think this MOSFET has just gone completely internally shorted out now so I better just replace that and um, maybe build a better coil and we'll see what we go from there okay so I've put the coil back to how it was I've had to replace the MOSFET a second time because I put this one in and it ran for a few seconds and then it died but anyway I'm powering it on this transformer now which when rectified can give me about 95 volts anyway I think this MOSFET died because the gate got over voltaged so I've added a couple of protection diodes between the gate and the drain I mean between the gate and the source only to find out when I turned the circuit on that those diodes started smoking so what I've done is I've reduced the feedback to just one turn and that seems to have stopped that I've also added this capacitor here onto the DC for more filtering I've changed the inductor for one of the ones out of my ZVS flyback driver and I've also added a breakout point so I'm going to connect this up okay there we go we've got seven milliamps reading on the meter I'm just gonna shut the blinds and there's an obvious reason I'm doing that okay it's probably too dark for the camera to see now oh, the camera can just about see things anyway I'm going to connect up the primary coil and that is just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen right now. It's actually doing something. I has plasma. Okay, there we are. I can see the needle. Try a light bulb. It's pretty warm as well. I'm going to need a stronger transformer. 